welcome back to our session so today we are going to discuss about structure of cell okay so here i have given you the example of the cell so can you find whether it is a plant cell or animal cell yes actually it is a animal cell because it does not contain chloroplast okay and only the plant cell will contain chloroplast and also cell wall okay so these cells have different shape size and also uh, different types of functions depends upon their structure okay so mainly there are three major functional regions in the cell so let's see what are the mainly three functional regions so the first thing is cell membrane so this cell membrane is also called as a plasma membrane and cell wall okay can you find where is this uh, cell membrane yes here it is so this is the cell membrane so which is the outermost covering of the cell and then cell wall so the cell wall will be present in the plant cells only so it will be present outside the cell membrane okay so this is the cell wall it is present in the plant cell and then the second important thing is nucleus can you find where is the nucleus yes so here it is right so inside the nucleus there is a nucleolus which consists of chromosomes okay so this nucleus consists of chromosomes and then the third thing is cytoplasm so which is a jelly like liquid substance present inside the cell so in the cytoplasm all the organelles are present can you tell me what are the organelles present inside the cell so the remaining things like golgi apparatus mitochondria microtubules ribosomes and then endoplasmic reticulum there are two types of end endoplasmic reticulum and lysosomes so all the stuff so are present in the cytoplasm so all this are called as the organelles okay so these are the three major functional regions present in the cell so now let's see about this plasma membrane so coming to the plasma membrane actually it is a, a thin and it is a very much flexible and uh, it will allow some molecules for the inside the cell and it will be transparent and it is a, uh, what to say it is elastic and it can be regenerative when it is damaged and mainly it is a semi permeable membrane okay so it is a semi permeable membrane so permeable in the sense it is going to allow some molecules semi permeable in the sense it is going to allow the molecules selectively okay it is also called as the selectively permeable membrane fine so does the outer covering of each cell so each and every cell will consist of plasma membrane as the outer layer okay and its size is about 7 nm so in the armstrong it is 70 armstrong fine so mainly if i draw the cell okay i'm just drawing a single line for this plasma membrane okay this is the plasma membrane actually it is a bilayer you know so there are two layers in this so actually it is a bilayer membrane we are going to see the structure of the plasma membrane in the next slide so this membrane consists of 70 of 75% of phospholipids 75% of phospholipids actually this phospholipids is a key element of the plasma membrane so not only the phospholipids the remaining things like proteins cholesterol and also polysaccharides will be present in the membrane in 1972 there are two scientists called singer and they explained the ultra structure of the plasma membrane okay so they explained about fluid mosaic model so now we are going to see about fluid mosaic model given by the singer and nichols so this is the structure of the uh, plasma membrane okay so it consists of bilayers so this is one layer 
and this is another layer. So we call it as a phospholipid bilayer. Fine. Mainly there are two types of proteins. Mainly there are two types of proteins present in the plasma membrane. So the first one is intrinsic protein and then the second one is extrinsic protein. This intrinsic protein will completely covers the lipid bilayer. Completely covers the lipid bilayer. This extrinsic protein will be covering the outer surface or inner surface of the lipid bilayer. So it covers outer or inner surface of the lipid bilayer. Fine. So this intrinsic protein is also called as the integral membrane protein. Okay. And this extrinsic protein is also called as the peripheral membrane protein. Fine. So, from this fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane, uh, we'll find which is intrinsic and which is extrinsic. Okay. So, if we see this, so it is covering the, uh, for example, we'll have this as a cytoplasm. So, which is the inside part of the cell. Okay. And this is the outside of the cell. Fine. So, this is the protein it is covering the inner surface of the plasma membrane. Okay. Now, what is this? Whether it is intrinsic or extrinsic? Yes, it is the extrinsic protein. So, this extrinsic is also called as the peripheral membrane protein. Fine. So, if you see this two, it is completely covering the lipid bilayer, right? So, these are the intrinsic proteins. So, intrinsic is also called as the integral membrane protein. So, this, this pink color, you know, so this pink color integ integral membrane protein is called as the, so let me change the color. So, this is called as the channel protein. This is called as the channel protein and uh, this uh, color, I mean this uh, protein is called as the carrier protein. Fine. Okay. So not only this, it also consists of glycoproteins and glycolipids. You know, mm, that is a green color. Yes. So this thing is there, right? So this is called as the glycoprotein. So, it is a protein attached with the carbohydrates. Okay. And there will also be, so let me draw one more here. So let me change the color. There will also something like this. Okay. So, this is called as the glycolipid. So, this is the lipid molecules uh, with the attachment of the carbohydrates. Okay. So, these are the complete structure of the uh, fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane. Okay. So, mainly it consists of lipid bilayer and then it consists of two types of proteins that is intrinsic protein and extrinsic protein. So, intrinsic protein is also called as the integral membrane protein. You can remember as II. And then extrinsic protein is also called as the peripheral protein, okay, which will be covering inner or uh, outer layer of the plasma membrane. But this intrinsic protein will be completely covering the lipid bilayer so that the molecules will be uh, moving from inside to outside or from the outside to inside, you know, like the molecules will be coming from outside to inside. So then it also consists of glycoproteins and then glycolipids. Fine. So, let's move to the next. Now, we are going to see about the advantages of this selectively permeable membrane. Okay. So, this selectively permeable membrane is also called as a plasma membrane, right? So, we are going to see the advantages. So, the first thing, it permits the entry and exit of some materials inside the cell. You know, so if the cell wants something, for example, the cell needs oxygen and also some food molecules, right? So these are entered, okay? And some of the waste will also be produced by the cell. So it will be coming out, it will be exit out of the cell, okay?
okay with the help of the selectively permeable membrane okay it permits the entry and exit of some materials and then it allows the metabolic intermediates remain within the cell you know what is meant by metabolic intermediates so metabolic reactions will be happening inside the cell you know so with the help of the food molecules and also with the help of the oxygen the cell is going to uh, produce energy you know so if we don't have food we can't get energy right so these are called as the metabolic metabolism you know chemical reactions so there will be some products will be happening between this uh, um metabolic reactions this chemical reactions so if that product get out of the cell the energy cannot be produced okay so it making the cell it making the intermediates to remain within the cell so the second point is metabolic intermediates remain within the cell so metabolic intermediates which is nothing but some of the compounds happening between the chemical reactions okay it should remain within the cell it should not get out of the cell right so these are remain within the cell with the help of the selectively permeable membrane and the third thing is about secretion secretions and waste leave the cell you know so the unwanted stuffs okay and also the cell is going to secrete some substances so it should be get out of the cell right so as i've already told you it permits the entry and exit of some materials so the same thing so the waste will also be get out of the cell okay yes and the fourth thing is about maintain homeostasis so it is going to maintain homeostasis of the cell so what is meant by homeostasis you know there will be some changes in the external environment right so it is going to maintain internal stability of the cell while adjusting to change external environment okay that is called as the homeostasis so maintaining the stability of the cell internal stability of the cell okay so it does not going to affect the external environment is does not going to affect the cell that's why it is maintaining the homeostasis and the fifth thing is about it performs physical activities also like what physical activities the cell is going to jump or it is going to run no so it is going to do some physical activities like diffusion and osmosis and all so we are going to see this in detail okay so it is going to perform some physical activities also we are going to see this in the further slides so this is all about the advantages of the selectively permeable membrane or the plasma membrane so the next thing is about mechanism of the plasma membrane so if we take the mechanism there are two types so the first thing is passive processes and active processes so if we take the passive processes there are three things so the first thing is diffusion the second thing is facilitated diffusion and then the third thing is osmosis so this active transport also processes also have three process so the first thing is active transport and endocytosis and exocytosis fine so we are going to see this one by one so now let's see about diffusion you know now first let's see the definition of the diffusion so the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to the lower concentration okay so there will be the movement of the molecules you know so if if you take this diagram so this is the cell the yellow part is the cell so this blue color are the molecules okay so these molecules are in high concentration what do i mean by high concentration so there are lot of molecules outside the cell right when compared to the inside of the cell okay for example uh, let's consider these are the oxygen molecules okay so if you see the outside of the cell there are lot of oxygen molecules but inside the cell there are only minimum number of oxygen molecules so the outer part of the cell has the higher concentration of oxygen but the inner molecule i mean inner part of the cell consists of the lower concentration of the 
molecules now these are going to diffused inside the cell you know this molecules is going to come inside the cell fine so when it come inside the cell you can see this in the diagram okay so now this this cell consists of lot of oxygen molecules right so this is called diffusion so how it is getting diffused yes with the help of the plasma membrane if you see this diagram so this is the plasma membrane right this is the cytoplasm inside of the cell and this is outside external environment so here these molecules are going to pass with the help of the plasma membrane okay so as this plasma membrane is the selectively permeable membrane it is allowing this oxygen molecules inside the cell fine this is called as the diffusion so what are the molecules is going to undergo diffusion so example oxygen and also carbon dioxide so this will undergo diffusion fine so the carbon dioxide will be formed inside the cell okay so the carbon dioxide concentration will be higher inside the cell for example consider this as a cell so inside the cell there are lot of carbon dioxide molecules you know but in the outside only few carbon dioxide molecules are present because this carbon dioxide is produced by the cell because it is a waste of the cell right it is going to get out of the cell now it will be coming out of the cell okay again the diffusion is happening because there is a higher concentration of carbon dioxide inside the cell when compared to the outside okay it is going to diffuse from inside the cell to the outside of the cell so this is all about diffusion so the next thing we are going to see about facilitated diffusion okay so this facilitated diffusion is going to happening okay with the help of some transport molecules so this will also going to pass from higher concentration to the lower concentration but the only thing is is going to uh, get inside of the cell with the help of the transport molecules first let's see the definition of this facilitated diffusion so facilitated transport of substances cross a biological membrane so biological membrane is nothing but it's a plasma membrane right so from an area of higher concentration to the lower concentration with the help of transport molecules so what are the transport molecules present in the plasma membrane we have already seen this in the fluid mosaic model so which is nothing but carrier proteins and channel proteins carrier proteins and channel proteins so this is the carrier protein and this is the channel protein okay so these are the molecules present outside of the cell which is in higher concentration so these molecules are going to get inside of the cell with the help of this transport molecules so what are the molecules is going to, is going to undergo this facilitated diffusion in the sense uh, glucose molecules and amino acids and also some of the ions so these are the molecules going to undergo this facilitated diffusion only the slight difference between this uh, diffusion and the facilitated diffusion in the sense so diffusion will be directly move inside the cell right but this facilitated diffusion will be getting inside the cell with the help of this transport molecules that's it now let's enter into the osmosis it is same as that of the diffusion the only difference is that there is a transport of water molecules that's it so the transport of water molecules from the higher concentration to the lower concentration is called as the osmosis that's it so now let's try the definition of the osmosis the spontaneous movement of water molecules which is very important osmosis happens only in the water molecules through a selectively permeable membrane from a region of again higher concentration to the lower concentration so this is called as the osmosis 
So now we are going to see some three different conditions in this osmosis. Okay, so actually I'm taking a beaker. Okay, so in the beaker uh, I'm filling some water. Okay, uh, by dissolving some sugar or salts. So that is called as a medium. So consider this is a beaker. Okay, so this is the beaker. So this is the. Let me change the color. Let me take blue color. So this is the medium. Okay, the blue color is the medium, which consists of water. Fine. And then this red color is the cell. Okay. So now, first thing we are going to see about hypotonic solution. This is the hypotonic solution. So the hypotonic solution in the cells, the medium consists of higher concentration of water molecules. Okay, so this medium consists of high concentration of water molecules. Now, if you see the cell, cell consists of lower concentration of water molecules. Okay, now can you tell me what is going to happen in this beaker? Can you guess? Osmosis is going to happen, obviously. So, from the higher concentration, the water molecules is going to get inside to the lower concentration here the medium consists of higher concentration of molecules but the cell consists of lower concentration the water molecules from outside of the cell is going to get inside the cell you know yes so the water molecules is going to get inside the cell so if this water molecules get inside the cell what is going to happen for the cell yes obviously the cell is going to swell up you know the cell is going to swell up it is going to gain weight okay so if this keep on happening what is going to happen in some particular point the cell may burst right the cell may burst this condition is called as the hemolyzed so in the animal cell maybe it is a RBC cell. So, when the cell is burst by swelling up in the animal cell is called as the hemolyzed. So, this is the first condition, okay, in the osmosis. So, it is a hypotonic solution, okay. In the hypotonic solution, we are taking a beaker which consists of some medium, okay. So, inside the medium, I am going to put one cell. It may be a plant or animal cell. For example, if I am putting the animal cell inside the beaker, the cell consists of lower concentration of what molecules? Obviously, under the osmosis, the water molecules from the medium is going to get inside the cell. So, if it is getting inside the cell, the swell is going to swell up. So, if it keeps on happening, it may burst at some point. This is called as the hemolyzed. Fine. Now, let's see the second condition. So, the second condition is about isotonic solution. The same thing, it consists of medium and the cell. So, this medium and cell has the equal concentration of water molecules. So, the medium surrounded by cell has same water concentration as the cell. So, see the arrow mark here, it is going to out on its side. Okay. So, there won't be any net movement. So, that is going to be a result. No net movement. So, if there is no any net movement, the cell will remain the same size. Cell will remain in the same size. It is not going to swell up or it is not going to lose weight. So, it will be as such. So, this is called as the isotonic solution. The concentration of the water molecules will be same in the medium and also inside the cell. So, the result is there won't be any movement of the water molecules inside and out. And then, finally, the cell will be remaining the same size. That's it. So, now the third condition is about hypertonic solution. So, again, I'm containing a medium. So, here, the medium consists of lower concentration of water molecules than the cell. So, here the medium is having 
low concentration of water molecule than cell now again yeah this is the cell we know that so now see the condition so the medium consists of low concentration of water molecule now what is going to happen again obviously the osmosis is going to happen we know the definition of the osmosis from the higher concentration to the lower concentration now where is the higher concentration of water molecule is present yes the cell has the high concentration of water molecule now what is going to happen from the cell the water molecule is going to get out of the cell to the medium okay so if it keep on happening the cell is going to shrink that's what you can see in this figure right so the cell is shrink so this condition is called as the plasmolyzed in plant and then crenated in animals so we have seen the three solutions that is hypotonic isotonic and hypertonic okay so in the hypotonic the medium contains higher concentration of water molecules so as it contains high concentration the water molecules from the medium is going to get inside the cell so that the cell is going to swell up so in the isotonic solution both the concentration of the water molecules is, will be remain same so the cell will be remain same in size if we take the hypotonic solution the medium consists of low concentration so that from the cell water molecules is going to get off out of the cell finally the cell is going to shrink fine so these are the three conditions in the osmosis so right now we have completed the passive processes right that is diffusion facilitated diffusion and then osmosis now we are going to get enter into the active processes so the first is the active transport yes so so this active transport is very interesting that is here it is not going to transport from higher concentration to lower concentration it's quite opposite to the diffusion okay so there will be the movement of water molecule i mean movement of the molecules from the lower concentration to the higher concentration it's very interesting right with the help of the energy okay so in this diagram you can see the atp atp which is nothing but it's a energy okay now let's see the definition of this so this active transport it does the transport of ions or molecules across a semi permeable membrane against the concentration gradient so against the concentration gradient in the sense from lower to higher in the presence of energy okay so this may be from lower concentration to higher concentration so many uh, ions will be uh, going under with the help of this active transport the movement of the calcium ions okay out of the cardiac muscle cells will be under this active transport okay so if you see the diagram you can see that so these are the molecules outside the cell so it is getting enter into the cell with the help of a molecule and then here the atp is used so with the help of the atp only the molecules can transfer from lower concentration to the higher concentration fine now we are going to enter into the second active processes that is endocytosis so endocytosis in the sense ingestion of materials okay it is going to uh, what to say it is going to eat something okay that is called as the endocytosis so it is the ingestion of materials by the cell through the plasma membrane right so it consists of two types so the first type is phagocytosis and pinocytosis so these are the two types of this endocytosis so this endocytosis it will be coming under the active processes right so let's see what is phagocytosis this phagocytosis is also called as the cell eating okay so which means it is a process of intake of solid particles process of intake of solid particle so 
you can see in this diagram so this is the solid particle right so this is the particle so what is happening so the plasma membrane is engulfing this particle with the help of pseudopodium right so this will keeps on moving like this way and it will be engulfing this particle okay and then it will be digesting with this this particle with the help of an enzyme called lysozyme with the help of the particle called lysosome sorry okay so this will be digesting this material okay that's why it is called as the cell eating process now let's enter into the pinocytosis so this pinocytosis is also called as the cell drinking so this is the process of intake of liquid molecules okay that's why it is called as the cell drinking process of intake of liquid molecules so if you see the diagram okay, so this is the cytoplasm okay these are the liquid molecules present outside the cell so these are going to enter into the cell what is happening this plasma membrane is get making this molecules to get inside the cell and it is forming the vesicle right so this vesicle will be helping for the cell during the metabolic uh, processes during the chemical reactions right so this is called as the pinocytosis fine so the next thing is about exocytosis so this exocytosis is called as the cell vomiting you know so the unwanted stuff is going to expel out of the cell so the process of expelling is the process of expelling the large sized materials outside the cell through the plasma membrane okay that is called as the exocytosis you know so the vesicle consists of the waste so these are the waste of the cell so now this vesicle is going to nearby this plasma membrane when it is going near to the plasma membrane this plasma membrane helps to make this vesicle to move out of the cell okay so you can see this waste or came out with the help of the cell membrane so this is the cytoplasm which means inside the cell and this is the outside of the cell okay so this is called as the exocytosis so endocytosis and exocytosis it's quite opposite okay so endocytosis in the sense some of the things is going to get inside the cell okay it may be solid particle or liquid particle so if it is a solid particle it is called as the phagocytosis if it is a liquid particle it is called as the pinocytosis okay so when the molecules is going to get out of the cell it is called as the exocytosis that's it so this is all about the plasma membrane now we are going to enter into the cell wall so for example consider this is a cell so it is a plant cell so i am drawing two cell two plant cell one and two so consider this is a plasma membrane so in between the cell there is a thing called cell wall so this is the cell wall which is present outside the plasma membrane fine now let's see about the cell wall so obviously it is going to present outside the plasma membrane the cell wall will be present only in the plant cells so this lies outside the plasma membrane so how it is formed actually the cell wall is formed by itself it is formed by the cell itself you know it is secreted by cell itself for what for the protection you know so how the cell wall is going to be it, it is very rigid you know it is very rigid which is very hard and it is freely permeable so this plasma membrane is the semi permeable it is not going to allow all the molecules inside the cell but the cell wall is going to allow everything because it is a freely permeable membrane fine so if we take a plant the cell wall is made up of cellulose so not only plants bacteria will also contain this cell wall so this cell wall of bacteria is made up of peptidoglycans 
So it is a substance made by the bacteria. And then blue green algae. So this is made up of chitin. So this chitin will be present in most of the fungi also. So the cell wall will be providing the definite shape, you know. So the constant shape will be maintained for the cells. Okay, because it is a rigid, the shape of the cell will be remain definite, will be stable. Okay, and also it is going to give a very good mechanical strength to the cell. Okay, which will be very much helpful for the cell for its protection also. Okay, so this is all about the cell wall.